and welcome to Trelleborgen, the mighty Viking fortress here in Skåne in southern Sweden. Unfortunately, we couldn't be at Höstfest this year, so I will show you some cooking and Erik will perform some music. Because as we all know, there was much more to the Vikings than just plundering and pillaging. So please join us as we show you some of their food and music. So I will start doing some cooking here. To, today I will cook a traveler's porridge. We'll start simply by cutting up some, uh, some pork, some smoked pork. And this will be the basis, the meat basis for the porridge. So we'll start off by cutting up some pieces of uh, smoked pork. So this I'll just throw in the pot, into the pot. Put it into the pot or the cauldron and uh, we'll take this to the fire and let it uh, simmer for a while. So make sure to have the pot at a good height and uh, just let it simmer for a while till the meat is tender and you get some juices out. So now wait for a while. We are in the longhouse, in the great hall of the longhouse. This would be where all the big feasts were held and everyday life too. Usually you shared this space with your animals to keep warm. And uh, for happy occasions you would have some music too of course. And the instrument most associated with the longhouse and the feast would be this, the Viking lyre. There are many finds from these from northern Germany, here in Sweden, and uh, in, in England as well. And you can pluck it. But it was most probably strummed with a pick. And then it sounds like this. So now the smoked pork has been simmering for quite a while. Now I picked it up and we used both the pork and the stock. And now let's take this away the next part of the meat. Make sure don't spill any of the valuable stock. Cut up the leek to use in the porridge. Uh, we're gonna just cut it small. And I'm sitting down, as you can see I'm sitting down cutting, which would have been uh, the method during the Viking Age. You would not prepare things by the table. We have the leeks and we'll uh, wilt them down in the butter. Add some, uh, now I'm adding some crushed uh, juniper berries to the mix. And a pinch of uh, caraway seeds. Here is sizzling.
but use about half the amount of grains to the amount of uh, stock you have. And then to add some acidity to it, I would, uh, for traveling, I would like to add some sour beer, but we didn't have it today, so I have some uh, sour buttermilk to use for this. Just add it and let it uh, soak into the grains. Add it just a bit, bit of time, just, just like when you're making a risotto. Let it simmer down and then you add some more. And while you wait for this, you could cut up the, uh, the pork. This should be minced finely and add it to the porridge when it's finished. So just cut up the meat finely. It should be almost as fine as if you make sausages. It uh, should be minced and uh, more or less minced and added to the uh, porridge for, for taste. Now, as the porridge is finished, we will add some butter and uh, some of the pork to it for the dessert. Pork, smoked pork I messed up earlier. And just stir it around. You would probably want it a bit cooked a bit longer than this, but this is, it will work. It's uh, between, between a soup and a porridge. And then you have to plate it up. And this is quite a filling meal that could be served both for traveling and at, at feasts. We have uh, some of the sagas mentioning people want their buttery porridge for the feast. And enjoy your meal and have a good digital fest fest. Now this is probably a common image when you think about Viking music, these amazing lures as they are called. Well, when the painter Carl Larsson painted his midwinter sacrifice in the early 20th century, he got it quite wrong. But the idea still lives on. You see, these bronze lures actually date to, well, the Bronze Age, which is about 1500 years before the Vikings. And they would probably have never seen such an instrument. So, what instruments do we know were used? Well, we know for example that the Vikings knew of the harp. A bit confusing that in Old Norse the word harp, harpe, actually means lyre. So the lyre was probably more common, but the harp was certainly known as well. Known since, since biblical times, basically. Also probably used for reciting poems. What about the other instruments? Well, there are lots of finds of, for example, a metal instrument that survives very well in the ground. From the 6th, 7th, 8th centuries there are some jaws harps. Munharpe, which is in Norway today, is a very popular folk music instrument. This is basically a little metal piece that you, with a tongue, that you sort of bite down on and you uh, sort of exhale while you, and you get the sound. This is also couple, common in, in America, uh, sometimes with, with bluegrass music even. <laughs> Which 
is more of a rhythm instrument really than a melodic record. Although you can play tunes on it with the overtone notes. If you form your mouth and you can get the overtones. Other instruments that we know from actual find are bone flutes, which is basically a small, very small recorder, a fipple flute, made from uh, the bone of goat, for example, and uh, it has a very clear piercing tone. And we can surmise that probably wooden flutes were used as well, but there are no finds of actual wooden flutes because they would have uh, all been disappeared by now. But there is a tradition, especially in Sweden, in central Sweden, of building these beautiful wooden flutes, which is a really old tradition, so we can guess that the use of wooden flutes was known to the Vikings. This, for example, is something called the Herjedals pipa from the country of Herjedalen in central Sweden. Uh, we think of it as, as northern Sweden down here in the south, but it's actually sort of in the middle. And uh, this is quite a big flute. Again, I'm not sure if this was actually used, but we can assume that something similar was known. This has a very deep tone because it's so big, of course. versatile instrument, the cow's horn. This could be used for many different purposes, obviously, as a drinking horn, would look like this, without any finger holes, if you want the drink to remain in your horn. And of course, as we all know, these were never ever used on helmets. That's later myth. If you drilled holes in your drinking horn and made three holes here, for example, and also an opening down here, you get what is essentially a type of trumpet. And uh, this had been known, had, has been known for thousands of years how to make cow's horns like this. It's, was, it was used here in Sweden up until at least the 19th century as a way of communicating uh, out when you were taking care of your animals. Um, and uh, you can, in a, in, a, in a way, this is like a Viking mobile phone. Because you can really communicate with this one because there are certain tunes and signals that you can learn to recognize and that were used while communicating over the hilltops. For example, if you lost a sheep or a cow, you could play a tune that meant that your cow had gone missing and the others, uh, the other uh, around you would hear that music, that song, and recognize it as a cow has gone missing and they would keep lookout for the cow and maybe signal back that the cow was found. And you can even teach cows to listen to specific tunes and they would come when it's time for feeding and so on. Cows are very clever animals. Uh, and this of course you saw when I played outside. Also used as a signal horn for battle, uh, as far as we know. This would not have been used indoors, it's more of an outdoors instrument. It can be heard over many, many miles on a clear night up on a hill, for example. Very effective instrument, the cow's horn. What about drums and percussion? Sadly, there is no evidence that the Viking used any type of drum. 
However, in the north of Sweden and Norway, and also Finland, there is a tradition of, with the Sami people, of playing uh, frame drums. And they are traditionally decorated with traditional patterns. And we don't really know if this goes back all to the Viking Age, but it is quite a simple instrument to make. And here is a reconstruction of how a Viking frame drum could have looked like. It's basically related to the Irish boran, boran, which you play to, in Irish music today. Um, and this is a hide stretched over a frame, and you hold it like this. You can play it with your fingers, or you could play it with a stick. This is a shaking stick, which is essentially a type of rattle that was used for small children. With dried seeds inside. And then you can have... For example. So now we come to one of my favorite instruments, which is an instrument you don't really associate with the Vikings, maybe. I'm talking about the bagpipe. Today we think, of course, of Scotland when we hear the bagpipe. But this has been used in Sweden for, as far as we can guess, for at least a thousand years. Finally, here is a storytelling ballad of the type that could have been heard in a longhouse such as this a thousand years ago. This tells the story about Herr Mannelig, a knight who meets a troll in the forest. It's a female troll and she courts the knight with all kinds of beautiful gifts. But the knight spurns the troll and sends her on her way back into her mountain. Mitt i dagen morgon innan solen uppbrann Innan fåglarna började att sjunga Berga trollet friade till fagerungers den Hon hade en falsk ligger tunga Hermannen lig, hermannen lig, tro loven i mig För det jag bjuder så gärna I kunden vill svara endast ja eller nej Det gångar ett tolv som går ut i rosande lunden Aldrig har det varit någon sadel upp på dem Ej heller betsel ut i munnen Herr mannelig, herr mannelig, tro loven i mig För det jag bjuder så gärna I kunden väl svara endast ja eller nej Om ni viljen eller ej Heder vill jag giva det kvarnan att tolv som står mellan Tille och Tärnö. Stenarna det är av rödaste guld och julen silverbeslagna. Herr mannelig, herr mannelig, tro låten i mig för det jag bjuder så gärna. I kunden väl svara endast ja eller nej. Heder vill jag giva ett förgyllande svärd Som klingar utav femton guldringar Strida hur 
Du strida vill stridsplatsen skolen i väl vinna Herr mannelig, herr mannelig, tro loven i mig För det jag bjuder så gärna I konen väl svara endast ja eller nej Om i viljen eller ej Heder vill jag giva en skjorta så ny Den bästa i lysten att slita Inte är hon sömmad av nål eller tråd Men virkad av silket det vita Herr mannelig, herr mannelig, tro loven i mig För det jag bjuder så gärna I kunden väl svara endast ja eller Nej om i viljen eller ej. Sådana gåvor jag tog väl emot Om du vore en kristeligare kvinna men nu så är du det värsta berga troll Av näcken så djävulen stämma Herr mannelig, herr mannelig, tro loven i mig För det jag bjuder så gärna I kunden väl svara endast ja eller nej Om i viljen eller ej Berga trollet ut på dörren sprang Han rister och jämrar sig svåra Hade jag fått den fagerunger sven Så hade jag mistat min plåga Herr mannelig, herr mannelig Tro loven i mig För det jag bjuder så gärna I kunden väl svara endast ja eller nej om i viljen eller ej.